morning and praise the Lord. My name is Shadrach Mwadime, and the Lord is master and savior in my life. My sign language interpreter this morning will be Rosalind Njuguna. Our theme on the church without borders, a caring community, ends with a reflection this morning on one of the great disciples of Jesus Christ, and that is Barnabas, the Barnabas ministry. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that encourages us, that spurs us up, up dear Lord, to live lives that are worthy of your kingdom. How I pray, dear King, that as I speak, dear Lord, your Holy Spirit will convict those who are watching me, those who are listening to me, of sin, righteousness, and judgment, dear Master, and that they may walk henceforth in accordance with your word. For it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. So the Barnabas ministry, Acts chapter 11 Verse 22 to 26 says, News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Verse 25. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So this passage refers to a certain good man known as Barnabas. He traveled throughout Judea and Asia Minor, spreading the good news to all who hold here. Now, according to the New International Encyclopedia of Bible Characters, Barnabas was a Levite from Cyprus who led not only Jews but also many Gentiles to the Christian faith. And we first see his name mentioned in Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37, where it describes how Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement, sold a field that he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Indeed, this penchant for encouragement, for support, even for generosity, selling his land and bringing it to the apostles for them to determine how it's going to be used to expand the kingdom of God, we will stay with him for a long time. When he saw how Paul, then still known as Saul, had become a fervent follower of Christ, Barnabas took the then unknown disciple under his wing and introduced him to other apostles in Jerusalem. The other apostles were afraid of Saul, now Paul, 
because of his past actions. He had murdered many Christians. He had led them into prison. He was a bad man. He was against the kingdom of God by all means. He did not want to hear of Jesus Christ and he committed atrocities against Christians. So when the other apostles had of Saul now converted to Paul, that he wanted to join them and now spread the gospel, they were obviously afraid of him, or also they despised him. They did not want to associate themselves at all with Paul. But Barnabas watched for him. And because of this, the new convert who was then Saul, but now Paul, stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. And this is found in Acts chapter 9, verse 28. So later passages detail how Barnabas was doing the work of God in Antioch, but decided to find Paul so the two could work together for the faith. And in Acts chapter 11, verse 22 to 25, we read that the church grew steadily under their partnership, not only in size, but also in finances. So what was Barnabas' background? As a Levite, Barnabas would have been raised a Jew, most likely also wealthy, and schooled. He was very educated in Hebrew and in religious fundamental instruction. References in the Bible indicate that he also was a very respected member of the society then. And this can be found in Acts chapter 14, verse 12. And was he one of the apostles? Yes, Barnabas was considered an apostle. While not one of the original 12 that God called aside through Jesus into ministry, he nevertheless was set apart with Paul by the Holy Spirit and sent out by the early church to spread the good news across the land. So in that sense, he was sent out as a missionary to spread the message of Jesus to others. So he was an apostle. In fact, the book of Acts, the writer titles the missionary pair as the apostles Barnabas and Paul. That is in accordance with Acts chapter 14 and verse 14. So what can we as Christians learn from Barnabas? Barnabas was someone who had worldly respect. He had wealth and other standing in society. He was regarded highly in society, but he gave it all for Jesus. Something today's Christians will do well to learn from. As a Levite, he owned property but he heeded the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 21 when Jesus told the young man of wealth how to get eternal life. Go sell your possessions and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Barnabas sold his field and put the money at the feet of the apostles. He then spent the rest of his life traveling as a missionary 
leading others to Jesus at great personal risk. We too are called to give our all. If it is your wealth, use it to expand the kingdom of God. It will not only profit the church here on earth, but it will also profit you. Because for all of us, our aim is to live for eternity. And the word says, you will then put your treasure in heaven. We don't know how we are going to use our treasure in heaven after we are through with this life. But we must obey the word of God because it is true. And I know when we keep our treasure in heaven, there is a reward that will follow us there, the crown of life that we will eventually get. And possibly more than that that has not been revealed to us. So in conclusion, Barnabas truly was a man of encouragement. He gave his life to the church and sacrificed much for the faith. He, along with Paul and other Christian leaders of his time, was instrumental in spreading the gospel across the land and converting great numbers, both Jews and Gentiles. And because of him and others like him, today we know Jesus. So we can honor Barnabas by sharing our testimony. Wherever we are, whatever our profession, whichever position God has given us, we can share our testimony as Barnabas did and share the good news near and far, no matter the risk. It doesn't matter your standing in society. You could be wealthy. You could be greatly honored. You could be very educated. Whatever your status seen is in life, give everything to God. Be God's instrument just like Barnabas was. Be a son of encouragement, lifting up those who are downcast, those who have been despised, could be the street families, it could be anybody who has been looked down upon in society. You know them, you interact with them. But just as Barnabas was able to lift a brother who was feeling low and downcast, a sister who was going through some very troubling times, we are called upon to emulate him and to be true Christians by works, by our works and by our deeds. So I call upon you this morning, even as you go about your business today, please be a Barnabas. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your servants who have been a great example, a role model to us. Like Barnabas, dear Lord, a man who was wealthy but used his wealth to expand your kingdom. A man, dear Lord, who was highly respected in society, a Levite, dear Master, but he gave his all for your kingdom. May you stir us up, dear Lord, to realize that that which you have given us is actually for your kingdom. That we may use the resources at our disposal to spread your gospel. And even if it is not wealth, just by word of testimony, in circumstances that we find ourselves today, use us as your instrument to spread the good news, the news that rejuvenates the soul, that renews the soul, that the good news that brings about eternal life. 
for it is in Jesus Christ we pray and believe.